All right, so in this video, I'm going to be reacting to a little potential scenario. Now, we'll see what happens with Stanford and Cal. Will they get into the ACC? I don't know, but you can take a look at this. 11 teams will likely join the Pac-12 expansion after the dissolution of AAC in hopes of paying no exit fees. So I'm going to take this article with a grain of salt. I don't think there's much truth to it. But it's the idea of the American just dissolving. And if all the teams vote to dissolve it and join the Pac-4, they wouldn't have to pay any exit fees. And the reason they would do it is because they would try and swing the idea that because it was an original Power 5 conference, the Pac-12, the Pac-4 is just re-expanding after losing all their teams and they're still technically a Power 5. Remember... The Pac-4 still does have Power 5 status throughout the next two seasons. That's how long it takes if you don't add the adequate teams to lose your status, although it is a little ridiculous. The Pac-12 expansion is reaching its closing stages. The conference is finalizing an agreement to absorb the American athletic... Boy, this person is just breaking all the news. There's just, I mean, they're saying they're going to absorb the American conference in suing the safety of the Pac-12 in the college sports landscape after months of chaos. Now, yesterday we were talking about maybe Stanford and California to the ACC. I don't see how this would make sense for Stanford you know, to agree to this unless it was guaranteed the rebuilt Pac-12 was going to keep its power uh, five status. Breaking Pacific American deal may be done in principle. Hardball dealings at end. American will dissolve to pay no exit fees. And the 11 American teams will receive invites to the Pac-4. And it's North Texas, UAB, UTSA, Rice, and FAU who will receive lower shares for San Diego State, Colorado State, and Boise State. So this is the full super conference here. With the Mountain West teams as well, you can see the West. You've got Oregon State, Washington State, North Texas, San Diego State, Boise State, Colorado State, Cal Stanford, UTSA, and then the East. SM. See, why would SMU agree to this? SMU is desperately trying. Maybe if this is like a Power 5 league, I just can't see this being a Power 5 league. It's made up of like 80% group of five teams. So how would you be able to swing this as a Power 5 league? Now, this would be the number one by far Group of Five league, especially everything that happened recently to the American Conference losing teams. But I have not heard anything that the American Conference is going to dissolve and these 11 teams are going to agree to it. And then also, I believe you would have other teams in the American just getting completely shot out of the picture because they just added a bunch of lower tier teams to try and mitigate the losses of Cincinnati and the others, Houston as well. So the Pac-12 is looking at absorbing a couple of Mountain West Conference teams. There were earlier reports of a potential merger between the Pac-12 and the Mountain West. However, the negotiation did not progress. Nonetheless, it appears the Pac-12 would pick a few teams from the Mountain West to join its new look league. San Diego State, Boise State, and Colorado State are potential candidates to join in 2025. Following a one-year exit notice, their exit fee will stand at $17 million. And I'm not sure that really makes much sense for... Because they don't even have a TV deal right now. The Pac-4 doesn't have a TV deal. If you're San Diego State... Are you really willing to pay $17 million in an exit fee to join a conference that's probably going to have a terrible TV deal? I mean, look at the Big 12. They're a conference that is significantly more powerful than this expanded Pac-4 would be, and they struggle to get a decent TV deal just because there were no Blue Bloods, and there's definitely going to be no Blue Bloods in this. So I'm not sure it would make much sense for San Diego State to join this league unless they absolutely have no options. There's also the idea that San San Diego State might just have to wait until next year to receive an invitation to the Big 12 if the Big 12 decides to expand again. To accommodate the three Mountain West schools, the four new members of the AAC will earn a reduced share in conference distribution. North Texas, UAB, UTSA, and FAU recently joined the American this summer following the exit of Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston. 
as the Pac-12 expansion draws nearer to completion. The new subject of debate is the network that takes charge of the conference television rights. And they go on to say Apple is probably going to be the uh, lead carrier of these TV rights, which would just be horrible for the entire conference when it comes to streaming. I mean, if you want one example, you've got all these people who realize their team is going to have one game on Peacock and they're losing their mind. And, and honestly, rightfully so. Streaming sports is just completely miserable. I understand, you know, the thing with cable, it's very expensive. $100 a month, $150, whatever, depending on who you have. But in general, when it comes to streaming sports, especially at bars, there's just not a great way to do it right now. You also have buffer lag. You also have just, you know, choppiness of streaming a live sport. There's like a five or six minute delay sometimes depending. And all, you'll get the updates on Twitter or, or, or the ESPN app. It is just a very poor way to watch sports. So if Apple TV is going to lead this, this is going to make this conference completely irrelevant. And there's no way Stanford would agree to this. Let's be honest. Do you think Stanford and even Cal would agree to something like this when they just turned down the Big 12? That's what doesn't really make sense to me in this whole rumor that's going around here with that the American is just going to dissolve because they want to avoid fit paying buyout fees. Stanford and Cal are going to be okay with having an Apple TV deal that's even less than the previous Pac-12 one was. Because remember, the Pac-12 Apple TV deal would have been like $23 million, but now you're minusing your two big dogs, Oregon and Washington. You know, th th this conference is still really good for a group of five if it happened for sure. I just don't see how plausible it is. It doesn't make much sense for Stanford, Cal, and, and honestly, San Diego State either. Some of those American teams, I'm sure it, it would make complete sense for them if they're able to bully out of the exit fees 11 teams and then say, look, if we can get into a Power 5 conference, if this conference is able to retain Power 5 status, that would make complete sense. Of course, we're still waiting on what's going on with Stanford and Cal. I mean, we've got plenty of rumors yesterday that something was coming out uh, but either way that is just the situation regarding that I don't think it's going to happen I had talked about a group of five super conference it does seem like there's something going on right now with the college football playoff where it was originally a six plus six format which made sense right your power five champions get an automatic bid and then one group of five gets an automatic bid whoever the best group of five champion is uh, but now obviously the Pac-12 is completely dissolved I guess the idea becomes if they rebuilt this conference would they get an auto bid and then would a group of five on top of that also get an auto bid I don't know how you can do that I think it has even if this conference comes to fruition it would have to be a five plus seven format there's because no, what other group of five teams are left after the after that point to give an auto bid it would have to be the four power fives get an auto bid, and then whatever the best group of five is, probably coming from this rebuilt pack four, but this pack four can just not be, it, it, there's no way you can consider it a power five league. It's not even close to the other three. It, it's, you know, it, it's not even in the same ballpark. And then the stuff on Notre Dame, you can see Notre Dame is technically in the ACC for all of their sports except football and ice hockey. I think their hockey team is in the Big Ten, believe it or not, and then the football obviously is an independent. They negotiated that into their contract with the ACC when their sports got merged into the conference. The contract expires in 2036. The caveat is that while the Irish remain independent, they have to play five ACC teams. I didn't realize it was five. I thought it was either three or four, but that, that is a pretty hefty contract. The Fighting Irish really having their cake and eating it as well. The idea that they're in a conference, but also independent. However, Notre Dame also wants to make a lot of demands. Traditional rivalries are big for the Irish, and some of their biggest ones are USC, Cal, and Stanford. The Big Ten currently has a major negotiating chip on its hands with USC coming into the conference. And yeah, so for Notre Dame, I think it's one of two things. This is all based on money. Notre Dame has two options long term. Remain independent. And this also depends on what happens with the ACC. But remain independent and you're still in the ACC through 2036. And you get a new TV deal because their NBC deal ends in 2026. So they're going to get a better deal for sure with someone. I don't know if it'll be NBC or another network, 
uh, that's the idea. And Or the other thing they can do is just join the Big Ten in the coming years and say, I mean, if Notre Dame says you take Stanford, we're in. I'm sure the Big Ten would oblige to that considering Stanford has no leverage and they're at the point where they're telling the ACC, listen, you don't even have to pay us. We have amazing Olympics. We have one of the best academics imaginable, but because college football drives everything and their college football team is not good and they're not getting good ratings, Stanford is forced to say, we, we, won't even, we don't even need any TV money for the first three or four years. We just want to get into a Power Four conference. So that's why Stanford is going to the ACC saying that it's gotten that desperate and they don't think they're a fit with the Big 12. Uh, but for Notre Dame, it, it's very simple. And, and I predicted this maybe a month ago or so, like right when this stuff was happening, Stanford and Notre Dame to the Big Ten. Now listen, maybe Stanford goes to the ACC. I know they're really desperate to do that, but you could definitely see a scenario where Notre Dame's like, look, we want more TV money. The ACC loses FSU and Clemson. They lose a bunch of power with those two schools leaving. We will see what happens there. On a scale of 1 to 10, how safe is the ACC right now? Well, I don't, are you talking about how safe are they in terms of dissolving or how safe are they in terms of not losing FSU and Clemson? Because I think, you know, they're, they're going to be losing FSU and Clemson next summer. I don't think the conference is going to dissolve unless all of the conferences collude. On it. Well, they don't even have to collude against the ACC, but it would be the Big 12 showing interest in some mid-tier ACC teams. It would be the Big 10 looking at a team like North Carolina, maybe also taking Duke. And it would be the SEC going after three or four of the big dogs, your FSUs, your Clemsons, your Miamis. Maybe they would also be interested in Virginia. Maybe the Big 10 would be interested in Virginia. Uh, I, I don't think the ACC is safe at all. Now, it's weird because the ACC, you know, has that grant of rights through 2036. We're all just speculating on if teams can get out of that, and if the dam breaks, they are screwed. So it's hard to really judge how safe the conference is, but if we know how conference realignment, why is all of this happening, why are all the rivalries getting destroyed, well, they're mainly getting destroyed because of money. And right now, Clemson and FSU, they look at their TV deal, they're not going to have enough money, according to them, and, and other teams in that conference are not going to have enough money. To understand how bad that TV deal is, it's through 2036. The Big Ten and the SEC are going to go to the negotiating table before the next ACC TV deal, and they're already getting double, or like 30 or 40 million more by 2027, 2028 than the ACC, and they're going to be negotiating to get even more on top of that. The Big Ten's TV deal ends in 2030, I believe, so it is just a horrifically bad deal, and something's going to have to happen, and it's not surprising that Clemson and FSU, FSU mainly, but Clemson behind the scenes, are making a big stink about this and saying, I mean, we need to, you know, do something about this. We need unequal revenue distribution. I'm not even sure the unequal revenue distribution is going to be enough. There's just not enough money in this TV deal. Uh, but either way, guys, that is the current situation. I do not think there's going to be this crazy Pac-12 expansion with American teams. You know, it, it just seems very unlikely for a number of those schools, but I did just want to talk about it because it is an interesting rumor, but that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.